We all have a story to tell. What can you learn from other people's life experiences, both winning and learning? Seeing sports, you win and you lose when the scoreboard hits zero. But in life, the clock is always ticking. So you might as well learn. Winning and learning, never losing. There's a recipe for success and there's a recipe for repeating. History. It's you never changed. You the game, so you yeah. can take the game now and then you can go apply it. I feel like 2021, we have the most information ever and the most distractions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Ooh. Some other shirt. So it's kind of like. <laughs> so we got shirts. <laughs> Ellie, I need you. Some, I, Ellie, I need to get some shirts gone, baby. Put it on a shirt like a like TNT. We'll be able to contribute. I want to talk about the process of life. I want to talk about life experiences. I want to talk about trusting the process. So I just want to do my part and give back to the community, give back to the youth, and hopefully it touches somebody's lives and motivates them. And, and that's really what it's all about. What's up, what's up, guys? Uh, welcome back to Chalk Talk episode four um, with another special guest, um, Chalk Talk, the Open Playbook of Life. We're very, very excited to um, keep providing some good content. Um, we want to thank our sponsor immediately, uh, Alternative Solar, for allowing us to use the facilities uh, make sure if you're looking to get into some solar panels for your home uh, that you uh, reach out to them. Um, I just want to introduce my coaches here. All right, we've got uh, Coach Serta over here, certified fit. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. And then we have uh, Coach Bailey over here, self-made. I'm so proud of him. He started an Instagram. Oh, so. I saw that. Thank so. you. <laughs> Big deal. Welcome you to can, the world. Can, <laughs> welcome to 2028. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, our special guest this week is Leron uh, Smith. Man, I'm so, so excited for this young man to be on here. Um, I've known him for a while. Um, met him through uh, mentoring some other guys through my time. And this, this, this dude's had an old soul for a long time since I met him. Um, so how you doing, Leron? Doing pretty good. Uh, glad to be here, and I appreciate it. Oh, man, Excited. good. I'm glad to have you here, man. Um, no, we can't ever forget our guy behind uh, the scenes, behind uh, the camera, the mics, and everything, the whole setup here. Uh, my guy, Elliot, uh, with... Where grinding never stops. That's right. I, I texted him this morning because we, you know we have a, we have a, we have a thread right, and yeah. you know you asked last night we still good, and you know we talked last night, and I hadn't heard from Elliot, so I was like, I heard from Leron. I was like, <laughs> dang, I ain't heard from Elliot. So let me make sure uh, we're good. I literally called him five minutes over here. Like, What's up, that? Not much, Mark. Just on location. I said, okay, cool. I ain't heard from you, man. I, I didn't know if the grinding was stopping today. <laughs> so, um, my man's over here just working low key, and we thank you, Elliot, for for getting everything Thanks, rolling here. So, um, man, just kind of jump straight into it. Um, a little bit of background on on you, uh, Leron. Uh, I know you played at Warren High School uh, basketball, and I know you played at Our Lady of the Lake here in San Antonio. Um, so just kind of talk about, uh, and I know you have a, a lot of brothers and sisters that all, uh, a lot of them are very athletic. Uh, I believe your brother was uh, like a number one recruit in the nation at some point, right? Football. Yeah. Football. Football. He's doing basketball too, but that's, that's oh, still, really? yeah, he was, that's a lot. <laughs> so um, just kind of opening up, talk about, man, your, your kind of your, your journey through, you know, Warren and, and, and you had a story about, you know, Our Lady of the Lake and so tell us a little bit about that. Uh, Warren, uh, well, we were a big black military family, so okay. it was a different experience uh, when we originally moved to Texas 2003 and just lived in Japan, you lived in Germany, and you just, you learn, and you, you learn a lot fast in a big family, but also being in the military. That life is much different. Pops get deployed, siblings got to step up, and look, got to keep, it make it work, uh, keep making it work, so just... Warren was a great experience just growing up in life, uh, <laughs> preparing you and just having a lot of siblings. You really just, I think it's almost natural, the competition. You love, but you, you compete. I mean, no sibling has wanted to share and just certain growing <laughs> pains. So just share food or nothing, right? <laughs> Eating the rest of something. That, I mean, it's just, 
you see a lot of things growing up and you just you learn so much faster but it's just yeah I feel like it definitely prepared you for the real world because it's not easy and you realize the strength because living in Japan and Germany wherever we went we were together that's all we had um, and friends were cool but might be leaving might be moving in a couple right. years so it was like the first time I got really adapt, a, a chat, um, a attached attached yeah, yeah. <laughs> to friends I was like and we laugh. I was hurt. Like, okay, no, no, I can't. I can't get that hurt again. So it's just you learn as a kid, you grow. But uh, it's been a, it's been an awesome experience, even uh, through Warren. I mean, we have a lot of my siblings that Warren at the time when we started was a new high school, and now I'm yeah. looking back like that. Like, <laughs> I mean, the pros came out of Warren, now. man. Man, so it's been it's been a lot of success. <laughs> a lot of athletes out of Warren, which is awesome, and just moving on to. After high school, you go to junior college and you realize it might not have been what you thought. Yeah. You're away from your family and you, 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 you really you hit a point where it's just like, okay, is this for me? I, I'm not a quitter. But then I realized, too, in the aspect of sometimes you might have to take two steps back, I mean, to jump forward. So it's mm -hmm. kind of like you, you analyze the situation, the casualties, and I left junior college, came home. I could have really just quit at that point basketball, and I was just like, I'm not. <laughs> so mm -hmm. just I, that that was a different grind for me when I came home because I got to realize, man, I got to work, work, <laughs> pay for my school, <laughs> and still train because ain't nobody was going to beat me over the head and say, hey, right. go work out. So that was just – it kept me disciplined and focused because I didn't have much time for nothing else. Let's talk about that. So you went to JUCO, which, I mean, playing at another level. Um, Baby played, I played. Well, you, you, did, I don't know if you played. I watched. You watched. Right? <laughs> so, and, and we were D3, so, you know, and we talk about that, obviously not being the highest level, but getting an opportunity to play college is, is awesome. I think, that a beautiful opportunity. So talk about how that, you know, has gone from JUCO and realizing, like, man, I'm grinding, I'm putting in the work, but yet I'm not even getting an opportunity or this is this may not be the right fit for me. And, and talk about how that can either shape you, destroy you, or, you know, propel you. It definitely it definitely can destroy you, <laughs> I can say, because I, I knew some guys that left and never came back. So it was like they was done after that. Once they went back home, went no more sports, it was work, we're going reality. Right. But I would say I, it would stick to just my circle, my parents, my, my closest friends, where it was just like, Hey man, just because somebody don't see your value don't mean you ain't got no yeah, value. It's good. Mm -hmm. uh, that's so that good really right there. It's good. All right, we're done. <laughs> so that really kind of hit my soul because, like, we're human. We all going to have our bad days. But if you got that circle intact, that's going to keep you up because even when they had that bad day. So it was just, it came back tenfold, came home. Uh, my AU coach, uh, John Collins, like, he was... <laughs> He was hilarious because he was just like, you ain't playing? Uh-uh, come on, we get you somewhere else. He was like, look, don't waste your time. And then I had my pops on the other side, like, well, you got an opportunity here. And I'm like, pops, I'm giving my all. I'm doing the extra workouts, this and that. You're not letting me touch the court. And I'm, I'm actually doing good in practice. So at that point, I was like, I'd be a fool. So I just kind of – it sucked because he did – I did lose my eligibility because it was a couple games. He would just throw me in at the end. Uh -huh. So that really, I lost that whole year. So I come home, and in my mind, I'm like, I got three years left. And as a ball player, you're thinking basketball, but you also realize, too, I was like, I started school. I'm going to finish it whether I play ball or not. Mm -hmm. okay. But just coming back home, going to Vista, you didn't, got, they got, they didn't even have a program at the time, no gym, no nothing. It was just like, it was gut-wrenching. Like, I love this, my passion, my, I'm playing ball, and it's like, you're back home. Yeah. Are you going to quit? You got friends here. It could be a distraction. And it was just mm -hmm. like, I was just like, if I keep myself busy, then it ain't going to be that much time for distraction. Yeah. I could do that later. That's going to always be there in my mind. So I'm like. <laughs> so I think coming back home, especially when you're athletes, like, I don't think athletes ever think we're not going to play anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's tough, you know. And yeah, coming back, like, I, I came back when I played. I played a year. And I messed up at school, so mine wasn't like opportunity. I had opportunity. Mine was like, you didn't go to school, you didn't go to class. I went to chapel. <laughs> just had to swipe your car, go to did. chapel. But that was about <laughs> it. Like I, I was playing. I was like, this first time of freedom, right? It's when a weapon. That, freedom is a weapon um, because mm. you, no one's like you just said. No one's making you work out. No one's making me go to. I don't have to go to class. Like this is weird. Mm -hmm. So 
why would I go to class? Like, yes. but, um, but you got anything for her? Well, I was, was going to add to that where we had talked about experiences a couple of episodes ago, talking about how if we can offer somebody some advice to keep them out of an experience or, you know, people say, well, I just got to go through it. Honestly, when you go to college and you're by yourself and you're an athlete, you get that freedom, that you can't, there's nothing else that can really, uh, really spell out what that is, that feeling is, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, that's one of those experiences that you do have to go through that to know what it feels like to really, you, you can go two ways. Like, you came back home, I came back home, he came back home. Mm-hmm. We all had to get back on a path to get where we are right now, you know what I'm saying? So Definitely. that's one of those experiences that you need to go through, but it, it's going to be, it's going to be a life changing experience, especially as a young person. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you, yeah. You're going to go through experiences, like when we say it's, like I said, my theory is like, I think it's done when someone says, I had to go through it myself. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, like, why? Like, you're, you're, you're going to go through enough by yourself. Yeah, right. Like, you're going to go through life in your own journey, no matter what. So why add more stress, more troubles, so to speak, of something that you someone can put a free game on you already, mm-hmm. right? So... Sardo, what what do you think about what do you think about that in in aspects of you know free game? You ever heard of free game? I don't know if you know what free game is. Are you kind of popular on the show, by the way? Like people keep saying, like I like Sardo. <laughs> What's but, there not to like? So, yeah, I um, about this. No, explain it to me. So I mean, I'm, other people might not know what it is. So so, let's... so I mean, like, what are you thinking as far as experiences? And, sure. And I think you talked about this. At first, when you said when you were out at when you were out the country, when you were going around the family, you had a small or not really a circle. How do you choose your circle? Because that's important. Because those are the other people eventually that you're going to learn from. If you're not like if you're not reading, we'll talk about that later. But if you're not learning, I mean, if you don't have a a, a big circle or you have a small circle, mm-hmm. and you're not taking the lessons from your friends, basically the question is. How do you choose your circle? Sometimes your circle chooses you, yeah. you know, depending on where you're positioning yourself, where you're at in life. Um, my circle, when I was in my early 20s, just happened to be my circle because of where I was in life, right? I was mm-hmm. a, in college. I was a server. I was, you know, so um, sometimes we're, we're not really necessarily out seeking a circle. They find us. Mm-hmm. But I think that as we grow and as we change and as our season changes, we sometimes leave those circles behind or we outgrow those circles. Um, or it's just not a good fit anymore for whatever reason, right? Mm-hmm. So um, I think a lot of it just goes with maturity and, and knowing, being wise enough to know, you know, are these people benefit? Like, I'm, that's just something I'm just learning now. Mm-hmm you know, about circles and the influence that they have, whether they are actively influencing me or kind of in the back influencing me, right? Because mm-hmm. everybody that we have, I, I, and I believe Around that more you. now than ever, they impact and, and influence in some way or another, whether we realize it or not, right? So that's why it's really important, and you hear this a lot, who you allow in your world, you know, um, who you allow to speak into your life, who you allow to give, you know, entertain, who you allow to entertain, mm-hmm. right? So mm-hmm. um, I think now it's just a matter of being wise enough, you know, at a young age I didn't. I didn't really have those guards up. And I don't want to say not everybody's a bad person, but not everybody's in alignment with what my goals are right now. Not so everybody has good intentions for you. For you or mm-hmm. mature enough. To, to know the things that you want. You know, like, you know, at a young age, at 20, I'm sure you were in your early 20s, right? We're going through this. He's still 20, right? Are you still 20? <laughs> 30. <laughs> no, he, he, he. 30. 30. He's the whole 30 now. Like, she's like, she's young. <laughs> and anyways. <laughs> so I, I do want to kind of talk about the circle thing because I think it hit a point and, and I want to bring up DMX. Um, DMX, uh, for me, my favorite rapper ever. Um, I don't think he's the greatest rapper ever. That's a whole nother show for another day. But he's my favorite rapper because I, I and I'm going to let you talk about this because you mentioned something about pain and, and, and taking steps back, but we talk about circle. We I got to believe DMX had a circle around him. You know, and, and I do got to believe that 
there was people in his life that were trying to positively help him. You know, I just it's hard to believe that he didn't. Um, but even through his music from an early age, like I was I, I resonated with him because he has so he was so honest. You know, he talked about he talked about the good, the bad, the, the rain and the in and the, and the darkness, you know, God and the devil. Like those songs where he's playing both, like, you know, it's it's clever and it's great, but like the message in there. So talk about Talk about what you think that is, Laurent, as far as, like, you talked about pain, and you talked about, um, or you talking about taking a step back, and we're talking about circle. What do you think about DMX, and, and just touching on that subject, because I know, you know, it's happened since the last film. Uh, his story, I just felt like, is, um, I look at the lines of just, we understood he was going through certain things and we talked about the circle. For starters, I just feel like pain is something you can't really tell somebody how to feel. Mm. We can say it as best as we can, but we can all hear a message right now and it can all hit us depending on our experiences Absolutely. in a different way. So if I sit here and say, well, she should feel this way, you, I'm like, it's not fair. So I feel like sometimes we put a cookie cutter approach to things and it's yeah. like, we're all so different. Mm -hmm. We're similar in so many things as far as just I feel like it, it, the key of everything, the most important thing is laugh and love. Laughter and love. Mm -hmm. But I mean, we're so unique. And when you look at success and pain and so many things, we, we want to categorize so we can kind of box people in. And his story just really just helped me to just that much more like, it's nothing's promised. Enjoy your people now because you can have money, success, but we can be going tonight, tomorrow. We don't know when our last day is, so it's mm -hmm. just... It just hit me and took back like enjoy your people. That's all. Just enjoy your people. Yeah. No. I mean, like I said, I, after this, I have a funeral to go to for for my boy Malik that I grew up with, and, and that you know his story. He had a rough childhood, and I know him since we were young through the Abdul Jamis. And man, I, I don't want to get on that too much because I get emotional. And but baby, talk about what do you think about the DMX situation? Well, like when you talked about a circle, um, or when Jen was really brought it up, it I really started to just go through my mind and try to think back then. When I was younger, I really, like you said, your circle chooses you, and as you get older and more mature, you start making those decisions. Mm -hmm. But I thought back uh, to Jordan Middle School, actually, I uh, had a great coach coming down, and I do remember specifically, and this just popped in my head, that he would always tell us, you can either be an athlete or you can be a hall walker. You have, you're going to choose, right? You have to align yourself with people who also have something to lose. Because if, you, if you're an athlete and you want to hang out with the hall walkers, bad things are going to start happening. Mm -hmm. you know? um, I feel like DMX probably really got, obviously, just completely enveloped in a really bad circle early. And he was just never able to get out of it. Even though, like I said, I'm sure he had so many support systems. Once he, you know, everything coming to light, they felt his pain. I'm sure he went to counseling, all that. But it was just so deeply ingrained in him. It, it's it's just tragic, really. Yeah, no, I mean it is like cause you you impact so many people in the world, um, and you. I think he didn't. You don't realize for for my boy Malik. I think he impacted so many people, and didn't even realize how important it was. To, mm -hmm. to people, yeah. you know, and, and like Sean going up to the balloon releases and things like that, and DMX, like you just see the pouring out of love, and it's like, man, it's like, you can still be all jacked up, effed up, have your own problems, but yet still be impacting other people, and I think that's, you know, very important for the show also, it's like, something that I've been wanting to do, and we talked about it many times, but it's like, I didn't feel like I was ready, mm -hmm. like, I don't feel like I'm all the way complete. You know, E.T. talks about, and I've said this many times, but you can be a five and coach a two. You can be a ten and coach a, you know, eight. Um, so just to kind of transition, man, the recipes, DMX, L, we're going to need some, like, DMX in the background, you know, when, we, when, we're, when we're playing the show. Like, you know what I'm saying? Something like that, something like that. So, uh, Laurent, just to kind of transition, man, um, tell me a little bit about what you're doing now because I know you – you were, you know, obviously, I, you didn't talk about Our Lady of Lake, but you obviously played there, had a great career. I've seen some awards you've gotten, so kudos to that, man. Because, obviously, 
you took the two steps back and well, tell us about the story on how you got at to Our Lady of the Lake. Our, Our Lady of the Lake was <laughs> interesting. Uh, originally, in my mind, I was just like, well, if all fell for all my plans, I was like, I'll just go to Houston Tillerson. I was like, I. I knew the coach been up there. I get it. They wasn't a great team, but I was like, I'm getting school paid for it. Like, I'm getting, I'm going to finish school. Whether I was going to be an athlete or not, I was like, I started it. I'm going to finish it. Like, I have to have closure. I'm not, <laughs> I can't just start something and not finish. That's just how I am. Um, and then I would hear, you know, you hear stories of people like, and when I was at Vista, like, hey, man, make sure you finish older people that might have been coming back to finish school. And I would hear them, and I'm, I'm going to take advice, I'm, especially if somebody somebody's giving it out. So I'm not going to. So I, that stuck with me. But Our Lady of Lake was interesting because uh, I had a f- close friend, and uh, he was like, hey, man, we got an open gym today. And this was after Our Lady of Lake's first year. So they had a great first year, won, uh, got conference champs, and it was like, okay, what's next? So I came into the open gym with my friend, and me and him kind of just did what we usually do, just play hard and get up under people's skin. Like, we're here, we here to compete. And I'm not saying get up under their skin, like, talk trash. Like, we're going to put in the work. We're not just, we're not just going to talk it. <laughs> so I uh, sat down with the coach for about four or five hours, literally right after the open gym. And he convinced me, like, you from San Antonio? We're a new program. We're good. Where are you going? Uh-huh. You want to be a part of this or not? And, of course, some of my boys had signed, too. So I was, like, feeling like, why not? So, uh I got I signed with them, and uh, it's funny because you know people hear athlete stories and they just think it's always success. They're getting playing mm-hmm. time. Well, first semester I was averaging I think about three or five minutes a game. Mm-hmm. So that really was gut wrenching. Where I'm in my city, I got my friends at the game, my mm-hmm. family, and they like we not we not playing. I'm the yeah. type look. Don't come to watch me sit, baby. I want to shine. So <laughs> right. I know you got to waste your time and put in the work. So literally that Christmas break, I worked out. I trained. So all my buddies that might have been like, well, I'll be back in two weeks or, I mean, the week we got off. I literally, on the treadmill, I'm training. Like, I'm on a treadmill, 12, running. I remember, like, 12 miles per hour on the treadmill, just right. trying to train. So uh, literally Christmas Probably break. as fast as I go, too, right, sir? Yeah. yeah. Warming up, you you know, you might hit that. And then you excel. Yeah, I, I so. go a little faster, but I didn't want to probably like that. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you. So it was like literally Christmas break came back. He saw I was in shape, and he was kind of like using me as a tool as, hey, LeBron's in shape. Why y'all not? And my thing Mm -hmm. is I like to be prepared. Mm -hmm. I don't like to show up, and I'm looking. My whole thing is kind of like my parents. I learned like it's almost like don't let them see you sweat. You're going to put in that work, but you don't have to. to." Yeah. So he literally literally after that uh, Christmas break started giving me a few more minutes. Got a few more opportunities, and literally we played the number one team um, going into uh, one of those weeks in the nation. So they were undefeated, beat everybody, and uh, literally it was like, I think I had 23 points in five minutes and 23 uh, seconds. What? So I hit six threes, six threes, a layup, and a free throw. I think that's what it was. It was I forgot what it was, but it was like, it was like I, hit, I, I was six or seven that night, but I only played five minutes in 23 seconds. <laughs> What? And I'm riding the bench. So it's like my guys, my, my friends, my teammates know how I am. Like even when I was sitting, I was clowning and having fun, but I was upset because I'm here for mm-hmm. business. I'm here to get my school, take care of my school, and to play on the court. I'm not here to sit the bench. If I'm mm-hmm. if I'm not putting in that work, then I understand that. But I'm yeah. I'm a firm believer. Don't mm-hmm. give up. Stay the course. So uh I hit the game winner that game. Crowd went crazy. I mean, it shocked me too, but like nobody <laughs> goes into playing the number one team and they're like, I'm going to hit a game winner, a deep three. Mm. And literally when I hit the shot, my best friend who helped me get recruited just grabbed me from behind. And it was just like everybody like that was one of the most priceless events I've ever had because literally like right after that, the next day of practice, we got the news there. So like I'm, I'm me all the time in the mm-hmm. aspect of like joke and I'm like. Well, if you're waiting for the guys that play, they're on the way. Just <laughs> he's like, "Are you Leron Smith?" I'm like, "Well, I'm like, well, who's asking?" But, uh, like, I'm I'm a realist. Like, I mean, so I'm not, like, I'm not like, that guy. <laughs> yeah, like I'm like they're on the way. So like, like yeah, I'm probably done this morning. So I was just like, but um, they just good. let me ask you about that because to get that opportunity, and I want to talk about you never know when your opportunity is going to present itself. You know, uh, you know the. I think the old saying goes, uh, prepar- "Preparation, uh, opportunity, and preparation. preparation." There's no such thing as luck. It's opportunity. No such thing as luck. It's opportunity and preparation. preparation meet, right? Yeah. It, it's when uh, it, it's when opportunity meets preparation. Mm-hmm. That's what it is, right? 
So you're literally in the open gym just trying to stay in shape and whatnot, and then this opportunity presents itself. So, I mean, I, just, I think that's just a great lesson in that because you never know when somebody's watching and other people are watching. You got kids now, they're always watching, right? And I'm sure you had to adjust to that. But I do want to ask you about the fact that you, you get this opportunity, this coach recruits you, tells you, hey, you're in your city, we're going to be wrong, we want you here, we want you bad. And then you're in the same situation as Juco, <laughs> not getting no minutes, right? How, how, did, you, how did you deal with that? Uh, it hit me hard. Uh, I mean, it really did. And my pops, he really stayed in my head going to the games. He was just like, Laurent, you're going to sit regardless. If you get out there, do what you do. Shoot that ball, son. You're going to sit whether you make the shot or you miss the shot. So at least take your shot. That's true. And that really – Man, that's good stuff. That, that blew my mind. That blew my mind because yeah. – People don't realize you're an athlete. Your confidence be so fragile when you're not playing. You questioning mm. yourself. You got friends. You got family. You answering text messages. Like everybody want to answer. You like oh, I'm going through it. I'm feeling it. I, I want to look. I want to yeah. answer too for it. So it's like it's. I think people that that uh, the hall walkers, so to speak, right, always assume that's either. I, I don't like watching games like uh, NFL. Game. I'm a big NFL guy, right? I don't like to go watch NFL games at a bar. Or something during the season. It drives me crazy. Why? Because the people that don't put in the work are the biggest critics. Mm-hmm. People that don't know what it is to grind. That's in life. <laughs> no, yeah, that's exactly what we're talking about. What else everything. Are talking about? I'm just saying, it just it, carries over to everything. And, and yeah. You can talk about that if, if you want, start it because it is life. Like the people it's that true. are not willing to take their shot. Put that time in. Always have the most They're to say. Always, always have the most to say. The loudest in the room is the what? The weakest <laughs> in the room. <laughs> that say, do more, say less, right? Yeah. So, start to talk about that. I mean, it obviously hit home with you a little bit here. Like, what do you think about that? How do you tune that out? And, and, and Leron obviously had to because he was in that same situation. Like, man, you just recruited me here. Now you, 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 you know, recruiters, they feed you a little, you know. A it's, little a it's a business. It's a business. I, I learned that. <laughs> Absolutely a business. So talk about that. like. Well, I'm going to kind of just ask y'all because I, you know, was never in college uh, sports. Yeah, you, 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 <laughs> you competed. I, I know, did. I did compete. Here. I did compete. Um, but my question is, you know, when you – do you think that they do that on purpose for – to, to humble you, to to get your mind right, to see, first of all, where you're at mentally, right? Because if people are put in that situation where they're just going to sit the bench, it could go one of two ways. Somebody could get so hot and heated about it, they're like, screw this, I'm out. Or it builds that character, it builds that patience, it builds that endurance, it builds that, that tough skin, you know? So for y'all, I mean, is that something that you feel that coaches – it's a it's oh, yeah. strategy. It's a it's you know to see what their players are made of. Or do you really just think they're just being buttheads and <laughs> you know like I don't know. It's, I'll let you take that. Go ahead. <laughs> now where I am mentally and looking back, um, and I, you know you get past the journey, you can look back almost like you get right, a bird's sure. eye view. I feel like it's like they feel they have to do that because you're coaching young men. Mm-hmm. Some of these guys think they are way better than they are, mm-hmm. and you got a system to run because you, you got you look as a coach, you got to win. I'm just being honest. That's people, how they feed their family. Yeah, exactly. So that's the business aspect. But as a student, you don't know that. So it's like mm-hmm. a lot of mental games. Like even after I hit that game winner, the coach said I, that was the first time I felt like he said something nice to me because up to then he was always on me, and I would. I'm the type. I'm already my harshest oh, critic. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. I don't actually have to have somebody behind me screaming to make me work harder. I'm already self like, mm-hmm. I'm looking in a mirror like asking more self like, why can't you play? Right. So, uh, that yeah, he, <laughs> I do think it's definitely a mental game that they play, um, and it's just you you got to persevere because it's gonna test what you made mm-hmm. of and yeah that's well I'll I'll, t- I'll talk about because I I coached I, I always tell you I was a better coach than a player. And I think um, on the coaching side, at least for me, I don't ever try to play games with somebody, mental games that is putting in the work. Um, if I see someone like you, I think the opportunity needs to be given, right? Talk about barbecue with, 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 with our semi-pro team. I, I, I mess with him. 
because he's late. He, he he don't remember the plays. And I hope he's watching. Why are you calling that man out? No. Well, I didn't call him out of name. He's <laughs> going to know. Everybody, <laughs> I, I hope he's watching. He, he can learn a lesson because yesterday he was late to the game, and you know he's a star. He's, he's a horse. He's a horse, and that's the most frustrating thing as a coach when you have the talent. Mm-hmm. And this is a life lesson when you have the abilities that other people do not, and yet you don't you don't prepare, uh, focus, work out hard. Like you don't do all those things. It's just natural. At some point, that's gonna go away. And we've always talked about the process in life. At some point, his athletic ability, and this is why you're successful next, and we'll get into that, but you had that mindset the whole time as a young man, as now that, and we talked about Inky, the process, right? It shaped you who you are and why you're successful now because you stuck through it, you kept persevering, you looked Mm -hmm. at yourself in the mirror, and you said, I'm holding myself accountable. I don't need this coach jacking with me because I'm going to do it anyway. Then there's guys like barbecue that don't do it unless you're riding their daggone tail, you know? So. Hi, I'm Alex, the head system monitor for Alternative Solar. And today we're happy to announce Solar Skins, a new option for solar enthusiasts that just don't like the way that black panels look on a roof, or if your HOA is giving you a hard time. Solar Skins are a graphic overlay that transforms your panel's visual appearance while also protecting them with a design that represents whatever you want. Whether you want your panels to look like your roof, a solid color, text, or an image, the skins are fully customizable to whatever you'd like. They come with a 10-year warranty and are compatible with any panel manufacturer. If you want to save money, energy, and look good doing it, contact Alternative Solar to learn more and see if a skin is right for you. But you now do Penny Stock, um, uh, Twitter, Penny Stock Gurus, correct? Yes. Um, and from what I hear, you know, um, you're doing pretty successful. Um, I've seen, I seen, a, I seen an Audi and a, and a brand new uh, Denali Chevy. So, I mean, something something must be working. Shit, I got $100 right now. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, talk about your transition and maybe how athletically or being an athlete has helped transition you into... Because I believe you went to the corporate world for a while, and then now you're, you're an entrepreneur. So talk about that a little bit. I say work ethic. Uh, being an athlete, I feel like um, it's athletes in sports, especially in college, after college in your mind, you're like, I'm going to go play pro. Mm-hmm. So it's mm-hmm. like it hits you different too. I mean, uh, I went out to Italy for like a summer league exposure type thing, and it was like $500 a month. It was like. In my mind, I was like, I'm a hustler. I can go make that at the house at McDonald's. <laughs> so I was like, because you finish college, and then back yeah. in my mind, like, I got a degree, this and that. I'm not selling for $500. Yeah. So in my mind, I was like, I, I'm not going to look at this opportunity. I can work here and work my way up. I looked at it like, dang, if I start here and get hurt, I'm done. Yeah. So I took that as almost an insult, kind of, and I could be like, it could be seen as I was quitting, but I was like, I'm about to go home and make money. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go give it, go into mm-hmm. the corporate world because I already – Felt like my parents and just growing up, I had been groomed enough where I can adapt. You grow mm-hmm. up with a 10, 12 in a house, you learn to manage a lot of personalities. And you more of the middle mm-hmm. sibling, you get to learn from the top, you look, and be bossed. And then you get your turn yeah, where you're like, absolutely. you know how you want to move and not do, maybe do things. So it's just moved, moved, uh, moving into the corporate world did hurt because it was just like, I'm 6'3", I'm sitting at a desk at USA and my knees is hitting it something. after a couple of jobs. So literally right after college, Basketball thing didn't, didn't work out. Come home, came back home, and I'm like, okay, trying to find a job with a college degree, no experience. Mm. Denied, denied, overqualified, underqualified. Isn't that sad? It, it's it, so sad. It I'm is. Sorry. It hurts. Yeah. It hurts. It it hurts. It's so so sad. it's like, got my first job, eight dollars an hour. Got a raise, nine dollars an hour. But literally, what a college degree. What a college. Degree. It was a hit in the throat. <laughs> Working and, and for certain let me, people. And you don't have to tell me the amount, but did you have debt? Oh no, you went to school kind of. No, actually, I did. 
credit card debt for Okay, us, okay. Uh, so a little bit of debt from school. Yeah, it was still but some. Still, but still, nonetheless, just, coming not up. Not $67,000 no. debt. But still, can you imagine? Okay, I'm sorry. Hey, come on, Biden. Help sorry, I'm sorry. I'm y'all Biden. Debt forgiveness. But, uh... Started, yeah, working at that call center, and I was literally working about 60, 70 hours a week because wherever I worked, I, I worked all the overtime they offered. So I was literally like, I felt like wherever aspect I was in life, if I give 130%, then I can't fail. You're going to grow through what you go through. So $8, 9 dollars an hour, worked there for about a year, got moved to cons, collections, did that because I love you got bonuses every month. So I'm like, dang, if you work harder, you get paid more? Sign me up now. Yeah. Worked over there for about a year. Then I was like, okay, now I got to get some corporate experience. I got to get a good mm-hmm. name on my resume. Mm-hmm. USA came up as a contractor job. So you kind of learn with contractor jobs. You can get cut. But I was like, I'll take the risk because it's a year contract. I'm going to show my value in a year and I will That's get That's the athlete in you. Like, oh, wait, <laughs> yeah, it's I, like, you could always gotten cut. You could always gotten, okay. Yeah, yeah. so I'm like, I'm going to show my value. Uh, got hired on a USA. Um, what not, did that for about four and a half years, moved over to Northwestern Mutual, five, six months, and I got to really learn just the financial aspect because I love my numbers game. God, I love the numbers mm-hmm. game, and I feel like if you study numbers enough in the financial world, you can kind of see how we can maybe make money work better because working at USA, I got to study accounts. Working in the fraud department, you see how people spend their money, this and that, so I got to see no matter how much somebody was making, usually when they got mm-hmm. paid, they were already spending spend everything they got. So in my mind, I'm already looking at, dang, do they have investment accounts? Are they even saving anything? So I'm like, I'm learning the diversity. We're looking at their rank, seeing like you learn, I get you get to learn something. And I'm working 80 hour weeks. So at USA for mm-hmm. three years, I did 80 hour work weeks. So shout out to my wife. She stuck through, saw my vision, this and that. Fast forward, uh, Northwestern Mutual, I left last May. Um, been uh, in the investment world uh, full time for almost a year now, but I had been doing penny stocks for I was at USA, so I was the nut telling some of my guys, "Hey, do some penny stock, put a few hundred here." So I would literally pay my bills and I literally put all my money towards investments because I was like, in my mind, I was like, I can go get the cars, clothes, shoes, house later. Use this yeah. money to flip my money, go get that later. So I, I stayed very frugal <laughs> for many, many years because I just don't like to waste money. Right. But you just got to understand just the value of You need to be my financial advisor, which you need <laughs> to be. <laughs> so, I can, I'll tell you right the, now. The, what the to, mic can hear you, man. I'll tell you right now what to stop spending money on. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God. Well. Well. So, back to barbecue. Back to barbecue. <laughs> but no, you really... I really... I did leave Northwestern Mutual for the aspect of, I was like, Man, I know I can make more in the penny stock world. And then when I originally got into Investor Mutual, I loved the idea of managing clients. But as I got to manage more clients, and you know, you go through making financial plans for them. And I'm like, man. And it's, you know, you, you do spend time away from family more and more. And I was just like, I want my goals to align where I can see my family girl wake up every day. And I know I'm already going to be organized on myself, my schedule, my plan, where I don't have to have somebody saying, Hey, you go to work. But I knew Northwestern Mutual gave me a good chance because it was a contracting job. You don't work, you don't eat. Simple put. So you know you got to put in the work. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So that was kind of like I jumped in, meeting goals, this and that. But I stepped away from Northwestern Mutual because I was just like, man, I can go make me more money on my own. Mm-hmm. And I like managing accounts, but the percentages they're paying me on that after a year in residual is still not even equating to half a half a half of what I'm making in the stock world. So I was like, man. I can maybe show some advice, give some pointers of what has helped me to manage accounts, but to people who want to manage their accounts, but I was just like, I don't want that hassle of, hey, did you help me make my money each year from each person mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. you build different relationships. And for me, I'm big on genuine friends and family. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't just going to go find clients that I never knew and never met in life just because they can make me money. I can get a percentage of, hey, they drive a Ferrari, maybe I can manage their portfolio. I was like, I'm going to start my friends and family. Mm-hmm. Let's build us. But... Through the penny stock world, I had been doing that since USA. Telling somebody, that's why some of my friends that work at USA still and moved up, doing awesome. They're like, man, that guy, they remember me. Like, wow. working those hours, mm-hmm. day and night, tired, all the holidays, missing those. And my wife, I'm explaining to her, like, hey, I'm the Christmas, Thanksgiving. I remember that sitting at the computer, look, 12 hour days, and still got to do my workouts. And you got to keep your sanity, too, mm-hmm. because I don't care what nobody says. Balance, yeah. Humans, humans get tired. Humans get tired. Yeah. And when we hit that rock bottom and get exhausted and 
you build a new human almost to get back up. But just when I quit there, I was like, okay, I need to be all in. And when I say all in, I was like, how can I help more people, but also kind of stay out of the line? Like, so the Penny Stock Guru thing was for me like extremely important because I was like, I had for years seen how people use Twitter to help and to hurt people. And I was like, I'm here genuine, I'm not charging. They can see my track record. And look, I'm like, put me to the light if you don't think I'm authentic. <laughs> Go look at my track record. I'm not going, I'm not here, I'm genuine. How many I'll followers help. you got now? I'm at uh, almost 19,000, I think at 18,400. But literally, last May, I was about 300. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. like, I feel like, I truly believe that if you put in the work, mm -hmm. energy is contagious. You're going to meet, it's I true. had people message me on Twitter. It's true. I don't, that they done told me, look, that almost brought me to tears. They're like, I've been able to look, pay for this and that, mm -hmm. pay off debt, be financially free, walk out of the job they didn't like. I'm never going to say that the corporate world isn't good. I said, it just depend on what yeah. goals you have and what yeah. you want to do in life. It's, was it your path? Yeah, if I if I didn't know yeah. penny stocks, yes, I would still be in the corporate world working mm. my way up because right. I'm like, where am I at? I have to move up. Like I'm thinking in my mind, you're here, okay? How can you grow? Mm -hmm. So, the penny stock guru thing really took off, and it really just it was awesome. It's, it's it's been a blessing, and I just penny stocks is definitely I would say something that if you don't know anything about it, then find you somebody to do before you just jump in. Otherwise, it's gonna mm -hmm. feel like you're buying a lottery ticket. Mm -hmm. But literally, I'm I dissect everything with refinancials. I'll, I'll go look. I'll go reach out to companies, <laughs> CEOs. Uh, I'll sift through court dockets. I've listened to court hearings, paid the money for that. Like, and people see how transparent I am when I put my research out there. I'm not ever gonna say go buy that. I'm gonna say I'm buying that because of this, 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 and that. Mm -hmm. So you can think because I feel like if we challenge each other to think, now he go fish. He can go. He might go find us the next stock to make us look a few hundred thousand dollars. I'm just being honest. Penny stocks run every day a few hundred percent. So it's more so positioning yourself prior to buy low and be patient. Mm -hmm. So like with dabbling into the penny stock world, some I, I I play along hot sectors and then I start to position myself because the market fluctuates throughout the year. So whether you got oil, gas, gold, unfortunately we've been having a pandemic, you got people making PPE uh, equipment, you get government contracts. So I just, I really spent many years just studying the market. And I would see mm -hmm. people who had a lot of followers on Twitter and I would just watch and study them and see how they acted when things went good and bad. And I just got to learn the, how to maneuver to really be able to be like, I can keep a lot of the drama out of this and help people mm -hmm. and still be okay. Like. That's that's a win for me. So just penny stocks, it's it's crazy. I mean, well, it's reading a lot. Of, bro, I know. I, 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 I hey, I, I've been taking no, mental no, notes no, this whole time, so I'm yes. I'm ready when you when you. It's it's a lot out there, and I love it because my circle got into it. So now I got some of my younger younger friends, 23, 26, retired. And I'm like I'm loving it because I'm mm. like, and I'm seeing them prosper, be able to start some of their business, and I'm like, man, if I started at 20. At twenty, at twenty three, if I got to be sitting on a few mm -hmm. hundred thousand dollars that I made in the market in half a year or a year, because you put in the work, I'm like that put you in a better position. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And of course, I knew their heart intent because I understand the power of penny stocks. So I'm not gonna just want to share some power with someone that I know might not use it as best in the right way. Yeah. Starting out. That's exactly. Good. Like, of course, you can be like, hey, I teach anybody this and that, but I'm like, I got to start with my friends and family first, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then I can move out because your circle. I love that. I mean. It, it's crazy, I mean, especially amongst minorities, young minorities, the only financial literacy they have is make as much money as I can, as fast as I can, not investments, not portfolio. Or save. Or save. save. Our family teaches us to save. Everything, like everything that can build up your portfolio, you, you never get taught that. So for you being, your age is still considered young. I mean, only in the past couple of years, I've really even started to really think about you know, what am I going to do? What are my investments for when I retire? And I'm like, man, I was doing this when I was yeah. 21, 22, 23. Like, it's, it's a great thing I feel like you're doing. Like you said, you want to focus on your friends and family. You're not just out there trying to just, I guess, poach off of people or just try to make as much money as you can. You're really literally trying to help people, especially young people, minorities, to get out of situations or even just build a legacy. And that's something that we talked about before, too. Mm -hmm. Like, you can really leave an impact on your generation. Mm -hmm. yes. and just, you just never know how you can impact. When you started talking about the penny stocks, like it was like a complete like this to the dial into it. Oh man, like so yeah, I I, I noticed that too. You were 
I we lose. Like, about I, I could just go. Like, we talked about this going. yesterday when we were talking about preparing for the show, and you messaged like, I, I need to talk a little bit more. You know, I, you're a very humble young man. And you've been like that since since I met you. Um, but as soon as you start talking about that, it, it really blows my spirit up. Passion. Like, like basketball. Passion. Passion. Exactly. Purpose. Purpose. Yeah. And everything and you've done wild. up yeah. into this life, uh, up into all your life experiences from basketball to the corporate world, like you think about basketball shaped you, taught you the dedication, the focus, the commitment, the sacrifice. Then you got in the corporate world, and, and most people, and I think this is the problem with the with, with people that get into jobs is like they lose themselves. Mm-hmm. They lose themselves in, in, in the job because they don't necessarily like it. I, I talk to people that they're like, man, you're blessed because you know your purpose. Like, you know you want to help people. You know, like, and I'm like, keep keep trying to find whatever your purpose is. Well, it's because we're taught to chase the bag. Right. You know what I mean? And so while our intentions may start out with our purpose, some somehow, some along, along the way, we lose that focus to the bag, and then things Thanks. just kind of, yeah, it changes. Our focus is not there, and our Absolutely. heart's not there. But and, <clears throat> if the Bible says your gift will make room for you, right? right? And people will, and this is my this is my big thing. People will quote God, talk about God, but as soon as some bad stuff start happening, why God? They don't trust it. You, we talk about trusting the process. You literally have to trust the process. Deron trusted the process in his life from playing JUCO to not getting no time, then getting recruited again, getting to a school, and then not getting no time again. Um, bringing donuts to the camera guy that, that, that hit the game with a shot, right? And, and then he just he just trusted the process. And then at some point, ET talks about this checkpoints, mm. right? Yeah. You had a checkpoint in your life that's like, you know what? I, I want to play pro ball. Five hundred dollars is not going to do it for me. You had a checkpoint, and it has to be humbling, and, and it has to be hard. Mm. And it's like going into the corporate world. That that was his corporate world. Basketball was his corporate at world time, yeah. at, at that, that time. time yeah. And he was like, this is not it. Yeah. You know? And, and if more people will realize that this is not it, checkpoint, I'm done. Right. Next What's chapter. next? But that can't be confused with quitting either. Absolutely like, not. No, no. You realize that this ain't going to be the path that you're going to take. take. And especially, like, when you go from being a, a college athlete going into that corporate world, you said, man, it, it knocks you down. Like, man, I'm supposed to be in the pros or whatever the case may be. But right. at the end of the day, nobody plays sports for their whole life, their exactly. whole career. Everybody yeah. has to go through it. It's just, when is it going to happen? And, and when you can realize that quickly, like you did. And that waste time. Just, okay, yeah. boom. Yes. On to the next and that's why he's 30 being so successful right. making the money exactly. at the penny stocks because he made that checkpoint so mm-hmm. woo. so i'm gonna kind of go back to something that you mentioned which i think is a really valid point just in any um when you're pursuing something and passionate and you have to grind it out you mentioned your family and your support system uh you know i think a lot of times we don't realize how crucial that is when we are grinding, when we are putting those 80-hour work weeks, if we don't have that foundation at home or with our, you know, whether Fall it's, through. yeah, <laughs> well, you know, it falls through. So, you know, I, you know that's, that's huge. That's, I think uh, sometimes we miss that, you know. Um, just so, so let's let me go back to the next thing like, or anything in general. Like, if you find your purpose, you find your gift, I'm mean, assuming you find your why, so your why, I'm sure, was your family, your wife, you know. Um, your why could have been, said, I think a lot of people don't realize sometimes the why is themselves. Especially, like, I mean, if you're not married, if you don't have kids, you know, like myself. My why, even though I don't have that, has never really been about me. It's I've always wanted to yeah. help people. And I love how you want to help people. And we need to talk after the show, you know what I'm saying? But... <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Um, gonna but that's that. actually how we connected <laughs> about the show because he had mentioned it to me. Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, I really don't have, like, I have a lot going on. And I'm staying in my lane. So I think that's the other thing. Like, I know what I have time for. And real estate is really, that's my gift still right now. That's, that's, my, that's my vehicle right now. Yeah. I don't truly believe I'm going to stay in real estate forever. It's just, it's, it's my penny stock, so to speak. That's allowing me to do this, mm-hmm. to give back, to create mm-hmm. a show, to, to give back to the kids. This show ultimately was about giving back to the youth. And that's what I, why, why I started it. Now I'm just like, I've grown people. Adults, adults that are like, man, keep doing, doing it. it. You, know, you know, when we received that message this week, you know, I've seen people, people putting post-it notes on their computer. computer. 
That, that was, was everything. everything. Right. That, that was, was everything. everything. She's gonna tell somebody else that. So, um, get back into the get back into this. Um, it, what advice would you have for people? I mean, I think you kind of talked about it about doing your research, but give give me some advice, like some tangible people that may already know a little bit about the game, not like completely. Yeah. I would say um, use your resources because for me, if somebody was telling me about penny stocks. When I first started, and I, <laughs> I will kind of be like, well, let me see a tracker. Like, I'm, yeah. I don't trust everybody, and even I'm not sure if you knew before I even got to really get to know you. I knew you were new Ben and Tony, mm -hmm. so I was already known to myself. You're older than them, but you know them, and they keeping you around. So I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, let me see how this guy is. So years, I was still following you and see you put in work and grow, and I was like, okay, he's authentic. But I had to, I had, it wasn't you, it was me. I just, oh, no. I don't trust easy, so I had to kind of see and like, hey, yeah, this, no, I'm, like, sure. I'm like, man, he he was he, he got a good heart. I remember you was at Jordan, and then you went in real estate. I'm like, but these, you don't just do these things without putting in that work. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like you. Success is you see the work and you're like, okay, it's that energy. Like I yeah. see that. and I was like, okay. And for me, even with just being, even when I messaged you, it was just more like, okay, now I want to talk because it was just like I had been sitting at home and I'm like, how can I get this out without coming off like he knows it all? Uh -huh. Because I don't, and I'm yeah. the first person to tell him I'm gonna miss plenty of stock runners too. But at the same time, we're going to catch a lot of them, too. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun. It, yeah. Make money with your friends and family and, and whatnot. And it's, it's so just going back to the penny stock world and just if I had to give somebody advice, I would say use, find some people that are authentic, check their stat, uh, track record, but also use what's out there. So right now we have the penny stock for Guru's Twitter. I started the group chat when I quit my job too. Mm -hmm. It was at zero. Now we just hit 4,000 people. And we don't publicize it everywhere. There's people all over the world. They be in that group chat like, if you're in UK, what brokerage do you open? So I, we wanted to control the narrative in the group chat so people would never feel like they can't ask a question or anything. Mm -hmm. Everybody is in there, iron, iron sharp as iron. But at the same time, if you throw a stock in there and we know it might be a scam or some BS, we kind of go put you to the light to see if you are thin as far as mm -hmm. what, what research do you have? Versus just buy that because we don't we don't talk that in here. That's why we glad we get to control the narrative. Nice. Or, hey, don't just buy this, buy this, buy it. Why? Let's make us think. Put out some notes that's important, some financials, a catalyst. Why is it? Why? Right. <laughs> so always asking the why. We started that. We got the group chat. I got an alert channel where it's just me because some people have said, "Man, it's four thousand people in there. I just started. It's way too fast." Let it be cumbersome for them. Got the alert channel where it's just me. It's the mental side. I'm explaining it throughout the day when stocks are fluctuating, this and that, why they might be, but also why you gotta stay the course. Because I know my first six, seven years with me and some of my friends and family, we fell, we fell, we fell forward, we fell forward, <laughs> we fell forward, and we kept reading and learning. But what I also would recommend the Penny Stock for Dummies book. I read it once a year. Mm. I get people when they say they might not have time for stuff, they don't have the money, or well, we got all this stuff for free. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we found a link where we got the Penny Stock for, for Dummies book as well. For it's free. an all audio book. Uh, they might have one. <laughs> you you asking for me, right? Oh, look. For me? Oh, I'll... but look, look. Now that you said that, now my brother he started a podcast. Okay. Nice. For penny stocks, he's done an interview with me, some of my other family and friends, and he's moving that way for people who don't like to read. Yeah. So he kind of, when you see that fire burning in somebody, I look at it like, don't be a distraction. Step back, support, or shut up. Mmm. So, Hold on, that's a shirt. <laughs> That's you a shirt. That's a shirt. So just, I saw the passion he had for that. For me, I was just like, well, I'm doing the Twitter. I'm doing the group chat. And I'm also messaging so many people I don't know through Twitter. Just, hey, I'm having a bad day. I'm down a few brand. Hey, I appreciate this. And I try to be transparent. But also, I try to also value my time and energy. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, mm -hmm. if my wife and my daughter are not good, I don't lost everything. Mm -hmm. so Absolutely. We got another one on the way in July. Thank you. Oh. So Congratulations. I, I, it's a boy, huh? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm more than penny stock, this and that. I'm, I'm excited to see us all grow and flourish. And I want to be there. And I just, I, I knew that it's nothing wrong with that. I know parents grow up, they have to work, they're not able to be at games and this and that. I just knew my, I, I'm, I'm, I'm ain't on. If I put my mind to it, I can do it. There's nothing else. I'm looking mm -hmm. in the mirror. I'm human. I've seen someone else do it. I can do it. Mm -hmm. So it's just. 
Man, people with you. less talent, it's, you know, what do they say? People with less talent doing more than you're doing, you know? So it's like, you have to have I'm, that. I'm in competition with me, man. Yeah. I, 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 I'm, I'm and that's you. important, and that's, too. Yeah. I feel like that's extremely important because it's like, you can wake up and inspire your damn self sometimes. Uh -huh. I've done certain things where I'm like, I'm taking it in, like, man, this is... And I'm, I'm texting my friends and family, like, this is a dream, don't wake me up. This year has been man. a blessing. That's awesome. And it's like, I, I'm looking at, like, my next goals. Yes, the money's going to come. I'm like, who else can I help that wants to help themselves? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not pulling no dead weight. Me. <laughs> Me. Look, look. So, and look, we talking. Yeah. We're gonna, look, that, we're that's... Gonna, we're gonna get going with it because man that's uh i think that's beautiful like to say um <clears throat> and maybe this to to be able to have purpose and and find your purpose find find your why you know that gift your gift is i think your gift is just hard work your gift is no one like no one's gonna outwork me mm -hmm. right and then now you found your why you know and helping the the people that are less uh, financial literate that don't, I, I, like Betty said, I didn't know anything about investing. I got in that chat. I, I was in the group me chat. I had to get out. I got out, bro. I was like, uh, no, because that. Uh, I don't speak Spanish, but I thought, like, are they speaking Spanish? Like, what are they speaking? I, I relate, you know, dang well, I don't speak Spanish. I related back to my first, my first uh, year playing college ball. My first year playing college ball, I, I just swear I want to be a physical therapist because I want to make money, right? And I, I go to Hardin Simmons and we're up there two a days. So we're there two weeks before school starts for two a days. I walk into biology class, the first day of class, and I'm just like, did, did, did I miss the last two weeks of class? Like, I know I've been up here for practice where we supposed to be in class. Like, what is this dude talking about? So when I was in that chat, I was like, oh no, like, I don't, I don't know what. I'm Googling the, 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 the words. Like, I'm like, man, I can't keep up with this. That's why we get the alert channel because no one else in there can talk with me. And with the main group chat, I like it because I let everybody talk. I, I don't ever put myself in a position where I'm dominating the floor. Uh. 4,000 people, I'm not gonna sit up there and act like, hey, listen to me every single day. No, everybody, look, I, I might, somebody else might, there's plenty of people in there that have provided other stocks where we made money off of. So mm -hmm. I look at it like, also going back to the quote of, never be the smartest person in the room, and if you wanna go far, go together. Mm. So okay. those, those two kind of just, and that's just learning from my pops, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> wisdom. I, I, take, wisdom. I take it all in because brother, that's great. So, so. Y'all have anything y'all want to ask that? I mean, it's take man, penny stock guru right here. I, 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 I told. Yeah, I told. I, I told some people about you. Uh, Uncle Drew, Drew Melton mm -hmm. on the team. Uh, one of our football players. He, he dabbles in and stuff, and he does a lot of research and stuff like that too. He's a good guy. And, told him about you and he's like oh let me know i can't wait to watch this episode so yeah, might have to put in he's a real genuine dude too yeah. so he he uh he was a teacher and and, and that stuff so yeah um, let, me, I mean, let me let me talk with him man i don't mind you gonna teach me something too <laughs> you talked about reading man um and in our conversations and getting to know each other and, and i just want to thank you for uh coming on again because you you mentioned that you i guess you checked my credentials so to speak over time and and, and, and that uh that means a lot to me man like for real like and, and you never and this is the life lesson is that you never know who's watching and, and for how long they're watching right so um, I appreciate that, but I know you like reading. We talked about the audio books. I don't like reading, but I love knowledge. Um, talk about some of the some of the books that that you have read or you that you like, or maybe offer something about that. All right. Well, real quick, I will say I never usually used to love reading. Okay. Uh, going through college, I might have read up to maybe two books. Mm -hmm. After college, I was just like. Where can I go find more knowledge for ha having to sit there and pay someone to feed me mm. outside of the information my friends and family gave? I was like, and I, I read a quote, and it was like, it was like, um, if you want to hide something, put it in a book. Oh, yeah, I've seen that. And that hit me personally because I was like, oh, I think that's man. in a rap song, too. Like. I was like, man, our culture don't really care for books. And I was like, damn, let me make fun of it. Like, because I remember my pops, he's. He read books like he. I mean, he mm. dictionary almost. He would read the source. He. I mean, growing up as a kid, he would tell me certain things he was doing as a kid, and I was just like, it blew my mind reading up the source dictionary. And 
Reading uh, for books, I would say uh, 48 Laws of Power, The Alchemist, uh, Richest Man in Babylon. Um, I think it's one called The Four Elements uh, as well, where it was just like, I love 48 Laws of Power because I study people and actions. We're humans of habit, create habit. Unless you're doing, like they say, it would take 30 days, 60 days for us to do mm -hmm. it happen before you get going. Other people realize your body changes and after working out. Yeah. But we're humans of habit, so I would just study people. 48 Laws of Power I love because of the dynamic of you giving historical lessons of how people play situations out. And, and it's never changed. History. It's you never changed. You the game, so yeah. you can take the game now and then you can go apply it. I feel like 2021, we have the most information ever and the most distractions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Ooh. Some other shirt. Good so it's kind of like. <laughs> so we got shirts. <laughs> Ellie, I need you to, I, Ellie, I need to get some shirts going, baby. Put it on a shirt. Like, uh, like TNT. Uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, that Chuck. Ernie. Ernie. Chuck. Yeah, but no, they always, what's, what's that dude, the kid there was like. Uh, Put it on a shirt. It's. Ah, uh, what's his name? I can't think of his name. I know what you're talking you know, about. It's like something dog or is a. Is, uh, I, I that's gonna about, bother like, me now. Do or something, like, dog, something, something, put yeah, yeah he's like, put it on a shirt. But uh, no, so I'm actually, it's crazy you bring that up. I'm actually on the audio book of 48, uh, 48 Laws, of Power. Laws of Power. And my boy B. White, uh, or uh, No Slack himself, uh, Brandon Elam, who's uh, you know, in the army out there, he's now in Hawaii. He wanna, he's writing a book. Nice. Brandon Elam's running that. If you don't follow Brandon Elam, man, that, that guy, no slack. Oh my God. He, so he put me onto that. We just talked last week. He, he called me, encouraged me. And um, oh my God. I will highly encourage you if I haven't read that. I just asked you an audiobook. You didn't say nothing about <laughs> I said last week. I didn't see you last week. I, 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 was, I, I, didn't, I didn't see you last week. Um, I wasn't at the gym. My back was hurt. Oh. My neck and my back. <laughs> no, but the, you, man, I actually I was listening to it on the way over here, and those talk about um, sometimes your mouth can get you in trouble, right? So I think you talked about how you you kind of in the background you don't want to say too much sometimes you kind of do things, and there was a story about this, this some in Russia where this guy like he was um, wanting the government to become more liberal and they need to adapt and they need to grow and they didn't want to do that, so they were going to hang him. Mm -hmm. Right, and so he, he's about to, he's about to get hung, and the the rope breaks, and he doesn't get he doesn't get hung. Well, back in those days, they looked at it like if something like that happened. It's like a prophecy, like oh my God, like he's a he's not supposed to happen. Well, when it happened, he was like. <laughs> His first words were, see, they can't do nothing right in Russia. They can't even make a rope. <laughs> right? So, yeah, that's right? So, he, the, like, the, I guess whoever reports back to the, to, the, to the king, whatever they are in charge. The czar. The czar, there you go. Goes back to the czar, and he's like, so he, he's supposed to have to get, oh, he always knows random stuff. They're supposed to give him a pardon now, right? So he goes, he goes to the czar, and he's like, when the czar's like, he's about to sign a pardon, he's like, well, did he say anything when it happened? And he's like, yeah, he says that uh, they can't do nothing right in Russia, they can't make a rope. So he's like, oh, okay, didn't sign the pardon, next day they hung him, and, and it worked. So the, the, the lesson in that is like, sometimes just shut up and keep it moving. Shut, talk less, do more. people so I know if I go post 10 stocks people are not really gonna listen for the most part but I'm like I have to put that out there so they know that I'm not withholding information but then if I go post like when we bought the truck or we bought the Audi or bought a bag or something it's kind of double like, tap like, double tap but I understand though it's about though, but we like we like nice things I'm not gonna act a fool to it at all but my whole thing is from a financial standpoint at what point are those nice things might maybe hurt your goals or hurt your pockets? Woo. So that's kind of talking to me now. It's talking it's, to me. Now. It's a it's a gut wrenching thing that we all have to slow, try to balance every day better because we mm -hmm. like nice it's just things. Discipline. Right. Yeah. It's okay to it's okay to like nice things and it's okay to grind and get nice things, but like you said, the the the, the lack of financial literacy and I'll be the first to say it. I'm bad. I, I'm bad with my money. You know. So you know we need to talk. But, <laughs> but, but like he said earlier, he had to think about, okay, I can get, the, I want this, but I can get this later. You know, right, this is right. a small sacrifice for this season for my ultimate goal. You and know? that's Absolutely. just now. Like, this yeah. is 2021, 2020, in 2020 when we got the car. So it was kind of like, it was a long time. Yeah. Ago, but it yeah. was just like, 
Mm -hmm. That's your process. It don't nobody just start off shiny. We 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 put in the work Sacrifice, and you yeah. just yeah. But you're right. This this generation. I I don't, I don't even know if we can call it this generation anymore, man. Because I feel like every generation is on social media. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Where I'm going with that is like it used to be a generational thing, and, and it still kind of can be. But I think everyone's on social media, no matter what generation you're on. Oh, yeah. It's a it's a society issue now that all we want to see is the success. Mm -hmm. Instant gratification. Instant gratification. What car you drive, what kicks you got, um, all that stuff. What trip are you on? Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's okay. It's okay to do those things if you work for it and grind. But like you said, some people will do that with what they could have turned that into make more money and make more money yeah. and because instant gratification. Or even, I just, just, even just prematurely, like I get caught up in it too. Like I'll go to the store, I want to buy something. I'm like, man, I had a hard week. I worked hard. I know how much money's coming in. Let me grab these shoes. When at the end of the day, how many pairs of shoes did I buy where I could put that money toward something like a penny? You shop? got a lot of pairs of shoes. Yeah, I got too you many. You know shoes. what? Now that y'all say that, I'm gonna see you something too. Where we literally explain how you can turn two hundred dollars into two hundred thousand off of just ten steps. Hey, I got a, my car I'm right serious. now. <laughs> <laughs> because we want people to see, like I literally started off with five hundred dollars. But literally, when I first started, I got to see that five hundred turn into thirty grand a month, and that would blew my mind. I'm sitting there, and I'm like, how do you? My like, I'm sitting at a call center, like, damn, do I need this job? And I'm now like, dang, do I even know how to manage thirty thousand dollars right now? I'm like, I don't. So it's like almost like you literally every step of the way, a thousand dollars. You like, and I and I, I, I preach if you can't manage the hundred, look, two hundred dollars. Right. How you gonna manage two hundred million? Right. A million, two hundred thousand, a hundred thousand. So it's just you mm -hmm. literally learn how to, like. <laughs> go ahead. I'm gonna go back to the books real quick. He didn't finish his list. I'm sorry. He he said a couple books. Like I know. he said, the richest man in Babylon. I think that's where we left. The off. Alchemist. The Alchemist. Alchemist. Forty Eight Laws of 48 Power. Laws of Power. This book I believe called The Four Elements. I okay. like that one a lot. Oh, Rich Dad Poor Dad. Rich Dad Poor Dad. Now those those penny sock gurus. Oh, for, penny sock gurus for dummies. Yeah, we gonna have to. I'm gonna have to eventually find somebody that can bring a story to life in a book. Cause I'm not. Hey, gonna, I can do the voiceover, man. Let's talk so about it. Hey, Morgan Freeman. <laughs> Um, <laughs> we, we go, we this go. is how you invest. <laughs> Ain't nobody gonna listen to that. Hey, <laughs> not like that. <laughs> what you mean? We, we gonna talk later. We, we, got, we got some things to talk about. Yeah, let's go. I'm like ET, bro. I'm, I'm on voiceovers now. You know what I'm saying? Hey, let's go. Um, but I do want to talk about. You said when, when you said something right now, I, I thought about blocking your own blessing. You know, when you talked about spending your money that and you can invest it. One, I think it's a broke mindset. When I say broke mindset, it's, it's, it's a generational curses that we were brought up. Like the instant gratification now and nobody, uh, the lack of financial literacy that we as our community um, have been given. Mm -hmm. I love teaching and coaching, but the more I look at it, the system so jacked up. Like we're not teaching the right things. I was, I was loved by the kids because I taught life lessons. I don't care when Pineda go map the Texas Gulf Coast, and neither do they. They're not gonna remember, but it's 1419, by the way. Um, <laughs> they're not gonna, if I ask them that 20 years from now, they're, not gonna, they're gonna remember what I'm talking about, life, right? Mm -hmm. And we don't teach about that. When I started the Jordan Gents Club, teaching young men how to tie ties, mm -hmm. teaching them about credit, I'm like, oh, where you wanna live? Okay, let's look up how much it costs to live in an apartment. Perspective. How much, you, how much, you, you know, you're wasting in an apartment, right? I, mean, I probably didn't talk about that because I wasn't in real estate yet. But it's just like cost of living. You think you want to ball out? Um, we talked about what it takes to be a man uh, in, in today's society. Like you can't talk about your feelings. You know, we, we, we can't be sensitive. You know, I'm like the most sensitive. I'm sensitive. You are. I, I'm an emotional being. And that's, that's frowned upon by many times um, because it's not the manly thing to do. And that's a whole nother, you know, we'll have to get on that again. You definitely have to come back. But we block our blessings by being so into the moment. Go ahead. I, 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 feel, it, say I, feel, it. I feel it almost like it's like if we want to buy something, like kind of when we, bought, when we got the trucks, it was like, yeah, we could have done that a long time ago. Mm -hmm. But it was like, I wanted to make it sure yeah. I could almost buy that truck 10, 20, 30 times. But mm. I just, mm. what did Jay-Z say? If you can't buy it twice, you can't afford it. 
So Ooh. it's just like I'm, I ain't heard that one. It's another yeah. shirt. Everybody has <laughs> <laughs> I almost said it. War dog. I'm gonna remember that next time for I got a freaking TNT. What's the name of my guy? So hey, this. we're grinding never stops. Go ahead. No, Go on, what are you talking about? Right, sorry, right, sorry. No, you good, but no, that's just we were just I, I was playing um, That's all right. We were just were with the Oh, just on uh, yeah, purchasing things. I mean I mean, I'm, I might have four pairs of shoes going into this year, and then things got to really fly and take off. And when I, I will just stick back to the penny stocks of just, you go check track records. So you go look at last year, we might have been in maybe 40 stocks that went 300 to over 10,000%. So you, you really put in the aspect of how little money can make you a, a lot. And I just, I have a lot of friends and family of that where they're busy, they're busy. I'm like, well, I got some mentors and fans, friends and family might be millionaires and they make time to sit down and talk with me. So Absolutely. I'm like, you're not busy, you distract me. Mm -hmm. We make time to eat every morning. Right. I mean, every day. So Absolutely. it's like, we, yeah, we're all busy. Speaking to me. We're all busy, Speaking to but me we now. still make time for yeah. really what we want to. And you'll right. make time for what is most important right. to you. We talk about that all I believe the time. That, yeah. Yeah. yeah, people Absolutely. make time for what they truly want. So I don't want to ever paint the illusion of this is going to be their success story, but it goes back to as y'all know. Putting in the work, no matter where you at, people get this illusion that it's gonna come easy. No, no. <laughs> but with penny stocks and now where we are and the information we have, yeah, I got to see friends and family younger than me do well off way faster than what mm -hmm. I did. But it's like we're not. Look, you in, we in. Mm -hmm. Now we now we can go help other people, bless mm -hmm. other people, and put them in positions of power. Where it's like, no, the people on TV that ain't uh, superhuman, this and that. We can do it too. It's not impossible. You've seen it through the inspiration you've been doing. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you have, and you have. So it's just like, you have to put in the work, simply put. It's not, nothing. Yeah. Nothing's going to come easy and fast. <laughs> nothing's going to come easy and fast. And uh, put in the work, grind. And people, like millionaires, it's not, I think uh, it's not impossible to be a millionaire. Not impossible to be a millionaire. So. Man, Leron, I, 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 you got to come back, man. You got to come back. Um, we appreciate having you. Um, I appreciate you sharing your, your, your story, your experience with, with the world. And, it's, and we talked about this yesterday. I know it's, this is not you. This is not really what I thought either, but somebody needs it. So ultimately, man, thank you for coming on. Um, coaches, I appreciate it. That's a good one. It's another good one, man. Another good one. So... Uh, we want to thank y'all for tuning in to episode four of Chalk Talk, the open playbook of life. We want to thank Alternative Solar, our sponsor, um, for allowing us to use the facilities. Um, if you're looking into getting in solar, hit up my guy, Eric Allen, at Alternative Solar. Um, and we just thank you for the support. We're going to keep putting out this and keep trying to uh, positively impact people. And just remember, your gift plus your why equals your purpose. So thank y'all. What's up, guys? The real estate coach here, man. Just want to thank you guys for all the support. Uh, Chalk Talk, the open playbook of life. Uh, please like and subscribe on the YouTube. Um, don't forget to hit the notification button so you can get updated on when we drop episodes. And also, if you're trying to catch up on the latest episodes, just go ahead and click right here, and you'll see that. So, again, we appreciate all the support. Leave some comments. Anything that we can do to get better and provide you some topics for the show uh, that'll help you, we're all about it. So remember, your gift plus your why equals your purpose.